Welcome everybody. Today's video is gonna be on this car in the middle right there, 1923 Ford Model T. I'll show you some of the accessories I have installed on that car, as well as just a couple of the other ones that I have in my collection. Also, I haven't started it in a while, so I wanna check the oil and get it started and make sure everything's okay. So let's get that car pulled out of the shop and we'll take a look at it. We'll start with the kerosene lights on the cowl here. First, I'm gonna check and see if they have any kerosene in them, which I doubt. You just twist and pull down. They have a literal wick that you raise and lower with the knob here. And, yep, she's dry. Let me get some kerosene in there and we'll light them. And if you use this 1K kerosene, they will burn cleaner and smoke less. Got some kerosene in there now, we'll get the wick dipped in there and give it a few minutes just to soak up a little bit before we light it. And again, this knob is how you raise and lower the wick. That effectively increases and decreases the size of the flame. So you just gotta kinda eyeball it and then adjust it from there. And then you flip this down in front and it exposes the wick right in there. So here's a better idea of what those kerosene cowl lights might look like in the dark. I've got all the lights off in my shop in here. And I think these are not so much to provide illumination for the driver, but uh, perhaps more so uh, pedestrians and other motorists could see you. In my opinion, Model Ts are generally easy to start. Uh, however, in the winter when it's very cold outside, it can be more difficult. So companies back in the day would make things like this. They say, if properly used, your motor will start instantly in the coldest weather. This here is an electric coil. You take your intake manifold, drill a hole in it like this. There's normally not a hole in a Model T intake manifold there. You drill and tap a hole and uh, thread this instant manifold heater in and then you'd hook up a hot wire to it with a switch and it would instantly heat up the manifold and therefore theoretically making it easier to uh, start the vehicle. All right, so this is going to the hot side of the battery. Now we just need to uh, complete the circuit with the ground. I mean, that really gets hot. Needless to say, I do not use these. They look perhaps a little bit dangerous, but uh, it's pretty neat that they still work. And I'm sure you've all seen these before. This is a Boyce Motometer. Uh, and these came in all different sizes and shapes and styles. And So the whole point of these things is that from the driver's perspective, on the back side is a scale. It's basically a thermometer, and this measures the temperature of the water in the radiator. Of course. 
And perhaps my favorite accessory is this steering wheel. If I can do it with one hand. It flips up and out of the way. Most of the time these are referred to as uh, fat man steering wheels. You can also find them sometimes on eBay, but they're generally pretty expensive. So if you find one for cheap or you see one at a swap meet someday, definitely pick that guy up. The idea here is that Model T's don't have a lot of space between the bottom of the uh, steering wheel and the seat. So different companies made these steering wheels to make it easier sliding in under the steering wheel. You just literally fold it up. Then you have all the room in the world to slide into the driver position and then just lock it back down. So here's another style of fat man steering wheel. This is on one of my other cars. This one has a lever underneath and you kind of pop it up. This car also has a manual horn. This is a Klaxon. This is all mechanical in here. You push this plunger, it spins a gear and that gear rotates against a steel plate and that's how it makes noise. I almost forgot this guy up here is a manually operated windshield wiper. You literally do like this when you're going down the road if it's raining. It's one of those things that's a pretty clever idea, but take my word for it, I've driven these cars in the rain quite a bit. And not only do they not help very much, but in my opinion, they also add a sort of a element of risk to your situation because a Model T, you kind of need both your feet and both your hands to operate the vehicle. And now you take one hand off of the controls to do this. You're sort of asking for trouble if you're trying to do this when you're going down the road at full speed. This is a pretty cool little jeweled accessory light I have on the dash. How cool is that? Those are real glass crystals. The reason people put dash lights on Model T's at all was because at night, I'll try to cover some of the light coming through the window here, but I think you get the idea. There's no dash lights at all in here. So just a little bit of illumination would help you see the key and maybe even see the ammeter. This next piece is one of my favorites. This is a Stop Thief auto alarm. Yes, they had auto alarms 100 years ago. All right, how this thing works is we have one terminal there. We have a post here. And we have a weight on the end of the rod and a clamp on top. So maybe you can see where this is headed already. You clamp this somewhere on the vehicle, probably somewhere out of sight. You would run uh, a hot lead from your battery, probably to this post. Then you'd run a wire off this post to your electric horn. And then when somebody tried to climb on the vehicle or enter the vehicle or steal the vehicle, this thing would rock, this rod would make contact with the wire, which has a charge from the battery, and it would send uh, six volts out to your horn and blow the horn, and that was the car alarm. Again, it's not terribly practical. It's more of a gimmick, I think, than anything else, but I bet it worked. Down here on the running board, we have a luggage rack. Some expand farther than others, but the whole idea is to carry things on the running board because these cars do not have trunks. You can put luggage on the running board and these racks will uh, keep them in place when you're going down the road. You can also put gas cans and whatever you can imagine. Here's a luggage rack on one of my other cars. It's a smaller one, but I like it. It fits perfect on this car because I have a gas can, oil can, and a water can on there. I also collect certain types of these running board cans.
This handle right here is just an extension for the top of the uh, brake lever. When you're in the driver's position and you want to put the car into high gear, you have to reach down with your left hand and push this lever all the way forward, which actually goes just slightly underneath the dash right there. I have a bad back and it's uh, sometimes it's hard for me to reach that far forward. So I put a, an accessory extension on that. So I just grab the handle here, pull up like that, and then push it forward. And I only have to reach this far at this height instead of down there and, and farther ahead. So it's much easier on my back. Reserve gas can. It's kind of a neat idea, actually. They made it thin, and you could make this fit underneath your seat somewhere, so you'd always have a gallon of reserve. So let me check the oil, and then we'll do a cold start on it. Here's another accessory I'm actually going to use here and show you. Can you guess what that is? That's how you check the oil. All right, I've got the fuel turned on. We're ready to go ahead and uh, prepare to start. Before I turn the ignition on, I'm going to rotate the engine by hand a few times, and that will accomplish two things. One is it will sort of get some oil splashed around before we start the engine, and two, it will enable me to choke the engine before we turn the ignition on, and hopefully it'll uh, start easier. All right, now I'm gonna turn the ignition on and use the starter, hopefully she'll start up. Almost right away. Gonna have to try this the old fashioned way, the battery's dead. I'm gonna choke it one more time, and then we'll turn the ignition on and crank her over. On Model T's, they put a choke inside the vehicle and out front here for hand cranking. You pull to choke, let go to release.
So when you're ready to extinguish these uh, kerosene lights, you can do a couple different things. Pull down the top and blow them out like a candle. Or you can just run the knob down on the side until the wick drops uh, far enough that it uh, sort of stifles the flame.